Right, number 18, the last question as it was from the 2017 Advanced Higher Maths. No picture for this because no paper, but this one was described to me because it was an easy one. There wasn't that much to remember. There were these two parametric equations and that the shape was a spiral, but I knew that anyway from T cos and sine. Cos and sine means it's going round in a circle. Multiplying by T means as it goes round in the circle, it gets further and further out. Classical Archimedes spiral, this one. But the question was, what's its instantaneous speed at any given time? That was the first one for, I think it was five marks. Well, T, notice it's sine and cos. T would be equivalent to, I know it's meant to be time, but T is equivalent to the angle it travels through. Notice it's gone through one, two, I think they said it was two complete circuits of it spiralling outwards. Well, as it travels along, the instantaneous speed, velocity, is at a tangent to the curve. However, you know the x and y components. The x component of the velocity will be the derivative here. dx by dt will give the horizontal component, sometimes that's written as x dot, the vertical component of the velocities, x and y in this case, give the position of this around this curve. So the rate of change with respect to t will be the velocity at every point around this curve but the two components. That way it'll be y dot. And of course, that's the resultant velocity. And if it says speed, it means what's the magnitude of that velocity? Never mind its direction, I didn't ask for direction. Well. The horizontal component of the velocity will be differentiate this, and unfortunately that's a product, so product rule. 1 times cos t, and then t, do I put a dot there? t times, der derivative of cos is sine t, but that'll be minus. Similarly, dy by dt will be product rule. 1 times sine t. Leave the t alone, differentiate sine, that goes to cos t, so that'll be a plus. So these are the two components of it, which means that the actual velocity is made up of these two parts. That's x dot, which is dx by dt. That's y dot. So v itself will be, if you want its magnitude, that's just Pythagoras. So calling the magnitude speed would be the magnitude of the velocity. And that would be given by the square root. I don't think I want to do square root all the time, so I'll just put square just now. Right. So that means I've got to square these two things then in Pythagoras. Square this, square this. I've got enough room. I've got cos t minus t sine t to be squared. And I've got sine t plus t cos t to be squared. Square bracket. Square the first. Twice the product. So that's cos t. I must have a t there. Cos t sine t. Square the last. So I'll be plus t squared sine squared t. Now I don't have enough room, I'll just have to write it underneath. Plus now do this one, square the first. Sine squared t. But things are beginning to pair off nicely though. Twice the product, so two times it'll be t sine t cos t. That pairs off even better because I've got a plus and a minus of the same expression. Square the last, so it's plus t squared cos squared t. Right, tidying that lot up. Those two terms cancel. They pair off and they pair off. I'll just show their pairings. I've got cos squared t plus sine squared t. And I've got t squared times. I've got t squared times a sine squared t and a cos squared t. Because I've got t sine squared plus t cos squared, common factor. And sine squared and cos squared makes one. So that just comes down to one plus t squared which means the speed's going to be the square root of 1 plus t squared. So there you go, that would have been part A for those five marks, we reckoned. Now there was a part B for two marks, which was something to do with the second time of the time here. There was a point here, and it said, probably called A. There was a point here, what was its speed at the point A? Well, you just need to know what t is there. Well, there's two ways you could find that. You can either say, well, how many times has it gone round here? Because I know what t is. t is just this angle in radians. It's gone round one and a half times. So that means that t should be one and a half turns, which is three pi. Or you could have said, well, at a, 
I know that the y coordinate is zero, which means that t sine t should be zero. Now, since it started moving, t isn't zero, which means the only thing that can be zero is the sine t. So that means sine t is zero. So that means t is either equal to, and the sine is zero, at zero, pi, two pi, three pi, and so on. And then you could just count off how many times y was zero. So it was, that was one, two, three, four. It was the fourth time. One, two, three, four, which means t is equal to three pi, same as before. So what was its speed then? Well, the speed at that point, I think it was called a, would be the square root of 1 plus 3 pi squared. There's not a lot you can do with that. The square root of 1 plus 9 pi squared. Unless you want to go for a decimal. Which if you did, would be 9.477 and so on. Which I'll just call 9.5. So either the exact answer or this approximate decimal answer.